Um, first up, we have the Pledge of Allegiance um, from Council Member Kitten. Everybody, please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to remind everyone that we are here to work together to better our town. We all have an equal voice. We may disagree, but we will do so with civility and respect because in the end, we are all neighbors. Uh, first up, we have announcements. Uh, community, days, community day is coming up for September 10th. Um, it starts at four and ends at eight o'clock with fireworks. Excuse me, Madam President, um, Vice President. Um, can you just, I've had some questions about having booths at community day if we could just take a moment to clarify that yeah. please absolutely so this year because uh, san alexis is, uh, does not have their booths anymore and the town is doing the devlin park retrofit the area of town hall campus that normally is where the vendor booths would be is under construction um, and the vendor has recommended in the future we not use it for tents and public foot traffic because of the surface um, this year, we will not have the space to do additional vendors and business um, tents. So we are limiting the, tent, the tent as part of community day to a town tent, a museum tent, a police department tent, and then the two uh, state representatives. Um, so if anyone has any questions, they're welcome to call me during business hours. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so public comment on agenda items only. Do you have any in here? Are there any online? No. no. Okay. Um, next up, we're going to have our public hearing on an ordinance tentatively identified as ordinance number 1527 to amend the budget of revenues and expenditures of the grand of the general fund and other funds for 2022. So as a continuation from the meeting two weeks ago, where we did the PowerPoint presentation on the budget update. This is the formal budget amendment uh, that is up for public hearing this evening. It is officially an amendment of four of the funds. Where I don't have my voice. <laughs> the, um, we're getting some feedback. Hold on one second. And so you can see on the general fund here on the front screen, this is the revenue section. <clears throat> it's easier to interpret from the expenditure side. If you come down below, you can see that it's an even addition of revenues and expenditures and bring the total general fund budget to 17 point, approximately $5 million. The largest amendment portion is this ARPA transfer and under the treasury's recommendation anything less than 10 million dollars received from municipalities can be used for revenue replacement for the general fund so we're taking all of that in to the general fund this year and that is the amendment for that difference um, which brings the full transfer from ARPA uh, for the general fund for this year to this to 1.4, almost 1.5 million. We talked about the incidental items, um, the demos on Montclair and Xavier um, will be funded from transfers in from the assessment funds. We also talked about the um, capital grants, I'm sorry, that we received from the state for recycling that were over, as well as contributions for things like fuel, and the public safety for, the, for instance, the fire departments will reimburse us for the fuel that has gone up because of inflation. There's also increases for fuel for public works. Those items are also covered by, um, which unfortunately I have this in the middle, with, that are covered by real estate transfer tax. And I apologize, let me move this. Which you can see the addition up here at the 185, which is what I expect us is a very conservative estimate for us to be well over budget to cover those inflationary items like fuel for public works and police. So that's the general funds as a brief overview. You can see, as I said, it continues to be balanced. 
Most of it is an administrative item for the ARPA money. That's a recommendation from Treasury. There's a small change in the committed fund balance versus unassigned. This is the truck that we um, purchased for Highland. And so you see the reduction in committed fund balance for that. Again, just a housekeeping item. And then as you go down to the next fund, this is the money that we're transferring for the uh, assessment fund that's going to cover the demos until they are sold and the municipal liens can be collected. We initially anticipated about 4,100 in interest income. The difference to get to the 20,000 was this, that'll be a prior year fund balance transfer in. This fund has significant, you know, plenty of fund balance to cover that transfer until the municipal lien is collected. And this is consistent with how this has been done in prior years. Skip the capital projects real quick. I'm gonna come back to that. If you come down to the American Rescue Fund, because we just talked about it while it's fresh in your mind, here's the money that's transferred out to the general fund. We're reappropriating the CIP money because again, it all needs to go to the general fund first and then can be moved into the other funds like CIP to help fund capital projects as recommended by Treasury. Um, and then we're reducing the contributions to fund balance because I'm taking it all to the general this year so that we can limit the amount of administrative reporting going forward. So if you go back to CIP, we talked about last week that we have declined, well, we have postponed the wall park project. So that's going to reduce the amount of grant revenue we'll receive in 2022. We'll take that in to revenue in 2023. When we do wall park, the trans that's been substituted with the transfer in from fund balance. Again, you can see what the fund balance was for CIP, what it was projected to be. It's still very healthy. Um, in addition, it's a moving of the ARPA transfer to a general fund transfer to cycle it through there administratively. We talked about the small changes to both sidewalk programs as recommended by Gateway. I can tell you after speaking with them this week, last week, that this, we are not gonna know the final number for this until we bid. And so potentially it'll be bid as an ad alternate for additional sidewalks. We may or may not use it. We may or may need more. Um, it's just with the cost of labor, et cetera, and supplies going up until we bid it, we can't be, be sure. Um, this is the difference in the Vestal Lights that was part of the insurance. And then we supplemented, supplemented it with the offset for public works, which includes some of the stormwater projects that we're going to have to realign for the permit. So again, I kept this based on the feedback I received two weeks ago, I kept this even. Uh, we may need to adjust this in November based on what the bids come back in once we bid it from Gateway. So I went through that very quickly. I apologize if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them this evening or after the fact. Um, but at this time, I wanna move to public hearing for the official piece. We will not vote on this tonight. We will not vote on this until two weeks from now. You want to, Steve, do you want to call for public hearing or do you want to? Yeah, yeah I can do that, sure. Um, all right, so we'll call uh, to order the public hearing on tentatively identified ordinance um, 1527, as just explained um, by Ms. Greathouse. Um, are there any uh, public comments um, of, of regarding this proposed ordinance? In the room? No? Anybody online? Nobody online. Nobody online? Comments from members of council? Okay, then that closes the public hearing on tentatively identified ordinance 1527. Okay, thanks. Sure. Okay, so do we have a motion to approve the following minutes submitted to each council member um, from the July 25th meeting? 
Jason had one change. I have one amendment. Um, I believe it's the final part. There was a public comment. Um, it's typed up as related to the redistricting, and it needs to be amended to say the zoning auto update. That was my only amendment. Okay, that's it. Okay, so no other comments, questions. Should I give public comments on this one? Or no? <clears throat> no. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as amended for the meeting of town council, uh, July twenty fifth, two thousand twenty two. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I will abstain. I was not at the meeting. Okay. Do we have to do a roll call? No. Not okay. Okay, great. Okay, now we report to the committees. First up is the report for the Public Safety Committee. Uh, Dr. Rappa is unable to do so remotely, so I will run through the Public Safety Committee. Um, staff reports, uh, the Chief's report. Um, we don't have the Chief, but we have the Lieutenant Basil. If you'd like to have any comments or you're good. Come on up to the, come on up to the podium. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, National Night Out was a huge success, I think. A um, couple unexpected visitors that we dealt with as we could. Um, but the feedback that we got, um, everybody seemed very impressed. And it was well, well attended. Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. Any questions? I just a uh, general comment. I was at National Night Out, and I 100% agree that it was very well um, regarded by everyone who was there. I know I was working with my team at the Red Cross. They love being there, love being a part of it. Um, I just do hope moving forward in the future that um, politicians are not literally given the mic in these kind of events. It kind of lost the whole spirit of the event sure. by having a politician when this was an attempt to gauge our community, engage our youth. And and it, that was a disappointment to a lot of folks that I spoke with. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? I, I would just like to say thank you to all of those who put the, the event together. It was done very well and it was very organized. And I thank all of you. I think a good time was had by all. Yeah, I, I would like to say, I think it's one of the, the premier events in the community. I think McCallis is a front runner in this compared to some of the others, the attendance, the, what we're giving out there. I think we're setting an example for National Night Out for whatever we should do it. So hats off to, to all the first responders in there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, next up is the fire marshal's report was attached uh, to our meeting packet. Uh, Jeff is here if you have any questions or comments. Any questions or comments of Jeff? Anything you'd like to add special? Okay. Bearing no questions or comments. Uh, moving on to item number three, building permit report. That was submitted uh, in the packet. Um, we do not have a representative here this evening, but I'm sure Tricia would be able to answer any if there are any. Are there any questions regarding that part? Okay, no questions. Uh, again, on the same matter, code enforcement. If there are any questions, that report was in your packets. Questions, concerns, comments? Bearing none, uh, we'll move on to- Mr. Chairman, um, I wanted to um, take note of the code enforcement process that was in our information. Yes. I, I appreciated that. I think it gives some um, quantitative information about the process and what the expectations can be from citizens. I would really like to see that if it hasn't been done so already to put on our website or put in some way um, so that if citizens wanna know how this process works that they can easily access that. I fully agree. I think that's a wonderful idea. Any other comments or questions? All right, uh, we will move on to liaison reports, the personnel board, uh, Ms. Schweiger. Um, okay, so I was gonna highlight and talk about the National Night Out, which was a great success, but we've already covered that. Um, the other parts I'd like to point out was, um, we are still in the process of finalizing and nailing down our candidates for the um, 
for our police officers. They did do the written test two weeks ago, and then the interviews are coming up next week. So, kind yep. of, kind of it right now. I do want to say thank you to the personnel board. They were all volunteering at the event, so we really appreciate that. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments for the personnel committee? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I um, do. And um, I wanted to thank council for maintaining the high standards on the testing that um, was uh, had been proposed by personnel board to lower that standard. Um, I think we can see by the 32 applicants that um, applied in how many positions are there three? Two, we had two in the budget going into 20, okay. 22, but I think we've had one retiree, so there's, it might be up to three. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I, I'm thinking it's three. Um, so we had 32 applicants, which I think says a lot about the our community and um, that this is a good place to work. And um, I think that keeping that standard high also, um, you know, allows our community to um, maintain its high standards. And I would love to see this process, if it hasn't already, also be placed in the public, because I think it's of great interest. Um, you know, how we select our officers, it is a very rigorous process. It's very time consuming. Um, it's very intentional. And I think citizens would love to know that. And, and, and even if we did something on our social media that we advertised that we were looking for officers, but to say something like, did you know that this process involves all of these things because we want the highest standard of officers, I think would be um, also a positive information. I, I think we yeah. can all get behind that. I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other comments for personnel board? All right, moving on to number two, Volunteer Firefighter Steering Committee. There was no meeting. So at this time, are there any public comments on public safety from in the crowd? Please approach the podium, state your name and address. Good evening, Marcia Caliendo, 105 through 9 Abbey. Um, I was going to wait until general comments, but since we've already talked about National Night Out, um, I just wanted to make a comment. My husband and I did attend um, as a way to show our support and gratitude for our first responders. However, the following day when I read the newspaper, I was appalled to see that Mehmet Oz appeared at the event and turned a nonpartisan event into a political rally. It was apparent that somebody knew he was coming because there were lots of uh, cameras present and a lot of people in Oz t-shirts. Yes, there were political candidates from both parties there, but none of them grabbed the microphone like Oz did and turned this into a rally. And, and I just, don't understand how anybody allowed this to happen. I want to know if this was sanctioned by the town, by the police, or by any other official. And if so, that individual or individuals owes all the residents of this town an apology. Why does everything today need to be turned into a political event? This event was to thank our first responders, and it was turned into a stunt. I'm, I'm really disgusted at what happened, and it makes me wonder, what do you guys have planned for Community Day? Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Any other public comment online? Okay. Next item is reports of facilities management. Uh, staff reports, public works activity report that was included in your packet. Uh, Jeff, do you have anything to add? I just have a few things to add. Um, paving program, we are on schedule. Um, so far, no, no reported problems. Uh, tennis court reconstruction, that's also on schedule. Net footings are poured. The base is just about complete. I imagine we will see probably blacktop there within the next two weeks. Uh, line striping program where we're doing a bunch of uh, crosswalks within the town for pedestrians and uh, a few bass car lines. Um, that's supposed to be weather permitting started this week sometime. Um, the windows, the window replacement program for this here building, um, went through, uh, the initial drawings. Uh, there were a few options, a few things I wanted to add. Uh, right now they're awaiting price from the pricing from the manufacturer to give us, uh, some sort of installation cost. Whatever. 
And the other thing is the HVAC from this building, as we talked about in the last meeting, that kind of started over. So we have, I have spoken to the engineers um, and I'm just awaiting some paperwork that uh, I need them to get back to me before we can start the process officially over. So anybody have any other questions? Jeff, I have a question. Yes. Um, I noticed that um, the tennis courts and pickleball courts are moving around, moving along very nicely. Are you still thinking that they're not going to open until the 1st of October? Yes. The, uh, actually, the reason why is the coding for the courts. Um, after they blacktop, it has to sit for a while and fume off. It has to, the asphalt has to gas off for a while. Um, yes. If they don't do that, it'll void the warranty. And then once they put the surface down, that also takes time to dry. So a lot, unfortunately... A lot of a lot of people are very excited about it. So I was just hoping maybe we were ahead of schedule or any something. So thank, uh, you. thank you. I'll report back next time, but I, <laughs> hopefully we are. Put a big fan out there. Yep. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, liaison reports, Environmental Advisory Committee, Mr. Casey. Trish, do you have a form that we need to vote on? Yes, it should have been in y'all's packets. There is a project form for social it's a social audit. it's it's to bring all the local area eacs together just as a meet and greet normally we just do kind of a head nod mm -hmm. as part of those items make sure that council doesn't have any concern i have no issues I think thank you great, i think it's yeah. fabulous idea thank you everybody online Thumbs says we're good idea. okay you've got thank your you. go ahead anything thank else you. to add from environmental committee any questions or comments Okay, uh, we'll keep moving on. Uh, the technology committee, uh, Dr. Rapa, but I believe we're gonna hand it to Trish. I attended the meeting. Um, the technology committee went through the website RFP and made some final changes. Staff posted that on Friday to me, um, McCandless and, and me um, as well. We've heard from three vendors so far and they are the three that we were looking and hoping to hear from. Uh, that's due back on the 26th of September. I'm sorry, that should be August. August. That's due back on August 26th. We project the award at the latest will be the meeting on 10-8, um, depending on how fast with vacations, et cetera, we can get some of the reviews with committee members done. We also, um, if vendors have questions, they can post them on McCandless and me, and they'll be addressed by uh, RJ or a member of staff. The tech committee is also working with the public safety department on budget requests to prioritize them so that we can come to budget with a good list. Um, and that was about it. Are there any questions uh, regarding the technology committee? I, I have a question. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna ask Trish. Trish, uh, in discussion at the technology committee as well as I think at council, I know we're going to be doing uh, a lot of work that's going to make the where we're having to do things with. I think it's going to be is it the HVAC system we're going to be working. Yes, and while and the ceiling is exposed, we will do that. That's so that what I, that was my question. Are we going to while the ceiling's out? Are we going to be able to do some uh, wiring or whatever we need while the ceiling's out, rather than have to break that out again? Yes, ma'am, that's the hope. We'll have to do it in sections, but the plan is to do that rework while the ceiling is exposed. Great, thank you. Uh, I, I would like to uh, thank the Technology Committee as well as Dr. Rapa for um, um, really paying attention to all the suggestions that were given to what was needed on the website from the surveys, as well as what council members, myself included, wanted to see added to really make the website informative to citizens and, um, and interactive so that it wasn't just a place to get information, but a place to also for citizens to interact with. So kudos to that very hardworking committee that impresses me every time I read those minutes. So. Thank you. Anything else for tech committee? Okay, moving on to stormwater management ad hoc committee. That's myself. 
Uh, your minutes are attached. Um, I think we had a productive meeting. Um, we were able to bring in our code enforcement. Um, I'm sorry, our planning officer last time um, and get more of input from that department. Um, you know, we, we had a productive meeting of steps we're going forward with. So I think good things are coming ahead. Are there questions, comments? Okay, at this time, I will ask for any public comments on facilities management. Anything online? Then at this time, I will turn it back over to the services committee, Mrs. Clooney. Thank you. Um, and reporting of the services committee, we will start with the McCandless Township Sanitary Authority, Mr. Casey, if anything to share today. Nothing to report and the minutes from the last meeting should be in your packet. Thank you. Any questions from council? Moving on to the McCandless Franklin Park Ambulance Authority, Ms. Zachary, anything to share today? Um, the minutes are in your packet. There's a lot going on over there as uh, management has changed a little bit. A new ambulance has been purchased and um, they are reg regrettably still losing money every month. Yes, I know. Thank you. And uh, finally, the Northland Public Library Authority, Mr. Singer. Yes, uh, your minutes are attached to the packet. Um, they're starting their budget process. They um, have met um, briefly um, to start to review things with Tricia and get a handle on things. They do have, um, since our meeting, the RAD funding is kind of up in the air. The, the matrix that they're using to calculate, the county just came back and said, blow it up, we want to refigure it out. Um, so they're trying to work through where they're going to go and what they're funding. Unfortunately, they may not have that answer for the county rat funding until the end of the year. So they're going to try to put together something based on previous years to get to us. Um, but there's winds of change there. There's there's the county would like to see more lower tier libraries get more funding um, and not be handicapped by the rat formula. So they've approached the bigger libraries and said, can you rework your numbers to make it work? And that's just they've done this, I guess more frequently lately. So that's a, a budget constraint that they're working for. That's my update for Northland. Thank you. Do we have any further questions from council on the services committee? Any comments from the public? Nothing online? No. And that concludes our report of the service committee. Thank you. Um, up next, old business. Do we have a motion for 7A? So 7A is in my ward. Uh, this is, or yes, yeah, we're, we're speaking about the traffic signal along the northern side of Rolls House Road, and this was no parking signs to allow uh, this intersection to work properly. Um, it's been through public meetings, everything else. So I will make a motion to adopt the tenantly identified ordinance number 1526, amending part five of the town code of ordinances, traffic code article 505, traffic regulations, to prohibit parking along the northern side of Rolls House Road from the intersection with Route 19 for a distance of 230 feet on August 8, 2022. Is there a second? A second. Jack. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Um, 7B, do we want to discuss? This was just placed on the agenda in case there was public comment and there was a need for additional discussion on the budget amendment. If no one has any further discussion, we can move on to 7C. Okay. Um, is there a motion for 7C? Um, part of what came out of the stormwater uh, committee um, was continued talk about the blazer drive culvert in the gun hiding process. Um, if you recall, three or four meetings ago, we talked about the different pricing. Um, the gun hiding came in, I think, around a million dollars. The full replacement was around $2 million. Um, there were questions about the length, every, um, the durability and everything else. And, you know, speaking with our engineers, speaking within our committee, we felt that the gun hiding process would give us our best value, um, as well as still giving us plenty of um, time um, instead of the replacement. What also adds to the factor is there 
has now been identified the culverts at Oak Ridge will also likely need to be replaced in the near future. Um, so whereas when we talked three months ago, we had one culvert replacement, now we will have two culvert replacement projects. Um, it's the recommendation of both the town engineer and the stormwater committee to proceed with the full diameter gunite repairs. I did have Public Works go out to confirm that it is in fact a full culvert. Um, there was a question of whether or not it was a half culvert. It might have saved some money. Public Works was able to verify it as a full culvert. Um, but it's my recommendation, um, as well as the four market committees, to move forward with this gun hiding repair. I will make a motion to authorize the town engineer to complete bid specs and apply for required permits for the installation of full diameter gun hide repairs to the Blazer Drive number one culvert. And as a side note, this was in our budget for this year to do the design and bidding process. Is there a second? I'll second. Back. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. I have, are, are, we have some questions or any maybe discussion? Yeah, sorry, yeah. Okay, um, is that option two that we're, that this is for? It didn't say which option that is. Is that option two? Yes, the option complete, two is the full diameter. The complete gynite repair. And that's what this is for, option two. I'm just making sure. Yes. That, um, I know what I'm voting for. Yeah, yeah. Option one was the half half moon. Right. Option two was the full gunite. Option three was the full new concrete span. Okay. So this so would be option two, the full diameter gunite repair. Okay. I, I just yeah. wanted to make sure because the option wasn't named in there, and I just wanted to make sure I knew what we were doing. So that this was clarification point. when the engineers brought this forth a couple meetings ago. It wasn't officially on the agenda to be voted on, and so we needed to put it on the agenda to be voted voted to move forward. So this is just, again, uh, formalizing the process because it wasn't on the agenda to vote at that time. Yeah, just making sure it's the right option. Any other questions, comments? No? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Um, okay, under new business, um, is there a motion to accept the resignation? I'll make that motion, please. Um, move to regretfully accept the resignation of Diane Ellis from the Financial Development and Promotional Committee. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. I would like to take a moment and thank Ms. Illis for the work that she has done with the Heritage Center. Um, it would not be in the place where it is now. Um, it, she was part of the original group that took it from an idea and has put countless hours into making this a center that we can be proud of and has worked greatly on things like our notorious North Hills. And I hope that she will continue. Um, she says she's gonna still help us out with the notorious North Hills and i'm um, hoping that she continues to be there at the ready and, and able to help us whenever we need her she's been a great asset asset to the town agreed okay are there any um public comments at this time and i would like to reiterate the comments of mrs corner um, and Zachary and Dr. Rapa. Um, Diane Ellis has been an instrumental part of the success to this point. Uh, again, we will miss her. However, she is still going to be involved in the Notorious North Hills, as well as some of the other programs that we have. She's been a great person to work with, and we owe her a great debt of thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Any online? No. Okay. Wait a minute. Yeah. Paul Heckman, 10529 Abbey Lane. Um, first off, I would like to thank Public Works that in their cutting down the retention pond uh, on North Meadows, I don't know where our boundary line is and where the retention pond starts. But they got all the way to the top of the hill and got rid of a lot of thistle that is a thorn in both of our sides, I think. And one of the questions that, that I might have for them is if there's something we can do as a community from the top of the hill that aids in whatever you're doing at the bottom of the hill, we would be more than glad to consider 
what we can do because most of the residents really don't like the Canadian thistle that's back there because it exasperates their asthma and things. So that's that's the, the first thing. Continuing on North Meadows, I observed something the other day and I don't know if there's anything we can really do about it because there's a lack of sidewalk at the top of the hill uh, where the couple buildings are on the south side of North Meadows uh, because we observed the young woman pushing a baby carriage in the street because there's no sidewalk there. And that's also where the road takes kind of a weird thing and people come around that corner very quickly. And when there's traffic in both directions, I was con concerned where I was one, knowing I had to get past her, but watching her traffic come from the other direction. Um, and early in the morning, especially when the sun is up there, you can't see when you're even driving up over the top of the hill there. I don't know whether just a caution sign that says slow down. The chief and I have talked about the speed going down the hill uh, where people get up to 50 plus miles an hour going down the little hill. Um, but certainly coming around sometimes off of the, the high speed Perry Highway, we do see people come through there quite rapidly. And the last thing that, that I have, and it's still on North Meadows, is this a, the Zakaitis property. I've been asked by residents in my plan, what's going on down there? Was the permit extended because they dug the trench and nothing else has happened because they still see the, the young kids playing in there and the things going on. And I have to make a report back to my constituents telling them, this is what I can tell you. Um, and I know uh, code enforcement's not here this evening to pass along that information, but if somebody could get back to me so, when I have my annual meeting next month, I'm in a position to tell my constituents what's going on with the property there. And again, if there's something we need to consider for the retention pond, we, we have an opportunity to talk about that, and see if there's something we can put in our budget to plant something different, whatever it takes to try to make that a better situation for everybody involved. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, even online? Anything that, no. Okay, that's it. Um, Motion anything? to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All Don't favor. give it a thing. Aye. 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 Thank you. Ben, you read, read a nice record. Quick meeting record. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Summertime meeting.